I mean, you beat Manchester City twice. I mean, we're talking about the best team in the world. Uh, your record there. I mean, could you explain to us what the mindset is maybe going into the games? Is it different than coming up against maybe the rest of the teams? Mm. Yeah, of course, you, you, you know on paper you face a, an opponent that is better than you almost in any position. Um, <clears throat> it makes it very difficult, but the mindset we have is that we go into every game and believe we can win. We're very aware that some games are going to be very difficult. Uh, uh, whatever, uh, City away, Liverpool away, Tottenham, all of them away, you know, but also at home, it's top teams. But um, um, we believe we can, and um, uh, we, we showed it. Of course, we know it's going to be even more difficult to do it again. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, I expect the, those top six teams, they know what we are about, so so <laughs> they, they respect a few Give, some, give but... some tactics away then. <laughs> yeah, no. no, but I mean... But, but they, they have analysed all our games, so I'm pretty sure they know what we do, but uh, we can uh, we can speak about it. The first question there was about how you sort of maybe give your players belief, maybe through the week leading into the game, mm. but I mean, as I said, it's not a secret. You, you play two systems, normally a back four, but when you're playing into the, the so-called top six or some yeah. of the bigger teams, you go to a back three. Could you just stand up? Could you just actually show yeah. us and maybe what was yeah. the thinking around it? We've got your... Yeah, you know, Normal formation sort of set up, set up here that we'd normally see from Brentford in most games, 4-3-3. But in those big games, you you go to more of a back three yeah. in those roles. Sometimes maybe two midfield players no, and no, three no, no, in front. No, 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 sometimes. Always three. Yeah. Jamie, come on. <laughs> and again against Newcastle at the at the weekend. So why, Thomas? Can you yeah. explain us why, why, why you would go yeah, with the so, extra so, man? So, for example, um, when... Especially all my time, especially here in the championship, where we were the dominant side. I think the two years in a row we scored the most goals in the championship and were one of the most uh, dominated, most attacking teams uh, there. And every time we played a back five, it was just oh, not again. It's going to be so difficult yeah. uh, because there's just less space and you just defend with five instead of four. I don't know. And then defend with a four. Sometimes the winger is dropping all the way down, but they're not. Def you're not thinking with a very, very good defensive mindset. So I just know with the five, I think that's a. Uh, uh, top way to defend if you want to defend. Um, then if you can put, uh, can you have a midfielder down so you can have uh, three midfielders? Yes, and then the two strikers. And then, um, then uh, with the back five, and then we have some. We, we still have clear defensive principles. Principles. So and the principles don't change with a back four no, to a back five. No, nothing of changes. It's a little bit different with four and five, but the principles are the same. Can you explain some of those principles? Yeah, for example, we always on the side we want uh, to create an overload, so we want the wing back out, and we want the outside centre back out. So we have the wing back a little bit lower here, and the centre back a little bit more in. You know what I mean, yes, perfect, and the wing, uh, yes, and then we have the eight out. So we always try to play three v three or four v three, so we get the six out as well. Oh, this is number nine, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so try to create that overload. That means the opposite eight need to come down to be the six. And then we have um, three players in the box. And then we know these days you always want to play balls under uh, the middle man. Can never happen. Impossible. Yeah. That will be the same. Uh, for the, for so the when the back. ball actually goes wide where you are and you've got the wing back who goes out, you've got the midfield players who are coming across, it's basically we can't... We can't allow the ball to be switched, especially when you play against the back five, because that is where you have the problems in the wide yeah. areas. And sometimes times. we need the, uh, the striker to come a little bit down. So if they have to switch, it's like pass, 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 give us the time. And to that gives you the across. time to all get over across. Yeah. Uh, and this is the low part. And then when we go high, normally we go man man. There's no secret, everyone has seen that. Uh, that, that we don't. When you play in this system, you go man to man. Uh, and you're obviously pressing high. It's all. Sometimes I feel it's sometimes difficult. Or would the wing back press the full back? We depends. jump and then mm, the... that depends a little bit. So okay. we have done that sometimes, uh, but sometimes that means that our centre back need to run with their um, uh, wingers. That's most likely quicker sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes I've changed it. So it's more the eight that go to the full back. Okay. Uh, so they jump. And then if there's one, then the centre-back steps to their eight or ten in there. So we're very focused, depending on the opponent and the types, and that, that, that's how we well, do it. The two sort of big managers in the last few years, or the, the two top teams, have been Liverpool and Manchester City. When you come up against those teams, could you explain maybe the differences in coming against them? Because the two top teams, but probably slightly different styles, do you have to play differently against either of them because of that? We do the same um, in principle. But we know, let's say, I think we all know that Liverpool play with more crosses. 
Um, they uh, play a little bit more in behind. Um, so that we are more aware of. City, more of the time, want more passes, want more to control the ball um, a bit more. Um, and then I think it depends a little bit um, on who is the key players that we try to close down. So if you're coming up against Manchester City, we know the key players, obviously Haaland, but he's a striker. Someone like a Kevin De Bruyne, would you ever employ a man-marking system or no, double up on him? No, never man-marking, but of course I have, have extra eye on him uh, because he's the key man. Of course City, they have uh, four or five uh, top players that you try to close down, uh, but we have an extra eye on him. Mm. How yeah. much information do you give to your players? So it's Everton. This weekend, which is live on Sky, will you be running through this kind of tactical discussion with them all? Uh, yeah, um, we will. We already we had the meeting about Everton earlier today, uh, so tomorrow will be the first part of where we're starting the tactical uh, work to, towards the Everton. So, so sorry, just on that. So you set the sort of the tactical plan right at the start of the week, so the players yeah. all know. No, so the player. So the meeting is just with me and my coaching just staff the coach. and the analysis team. So, but tomorrow, we in training. We will start. To, to drip in some of the tactical bits. So it's linked to our principles. So let's say we want to break through and we want to produce some crosses. So the way we want to do it, linked or adjusted to the way Everton is defending. So we want to break through and play and run on the side. Um, then we link it or adjust it to the way uh, Everton defend. So it's our style, but linked to, to their defense. So that we do Tuesday. Then we do something else uh, Thursday, and then it's the overall game plan on the on the Friday. Thomas, a big thing. When I was a player, it was always that thing of when a manager gives the team, and sometimes managers on a Friday wouldn't want some of the players to know they weren't playing, and it's that difficulty in terms of how you work on things without giving the team away. I mean, are you do you let the players know Thursday or Friday what the team is? This is the team. This is the plan. And you have to, the other players who are not playing have to almost get the heads around it very early rather than waiting a couple of hours before the game. Yeah, I say it 9 out of 10, if not 19 out of 20, I say it Friday morning yeah. uh, before we train because we train the set pieces. I think we train that better with the team that knows the start. Sometimes they know it on the Thursday when we do some tactical work. Not, not no, but God, I change players, but you know how it is. If I yeah. start with one team and then I change three players, then they can't guess, probably can guess it's the first team. But once in a while, I've swapped around uh, for the starting team because mm, you just thought about it and you wanted that other type uh, in. But I'm a big, big believer that they know. I'm a big, big believer. So I could ask you, how do you want? Do you want to know it or do you want to know it? Uh, so do you, did, did you want to know it on the Friday? Or two hours before the game. That you should oh, start. I wanted to know on a Friday, but they wanted to know on the my managers didn't want to tell us on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to leave it two hours before the game. Exactly. But I, I'm a big believer. Why not? Yeah. I know that is the other bit, but that's why we need to be a little bit on the front foot and speak to the players that is maybe going to be um, not in the team. Um, and sometimes we know there's more, more likely nine, ten players that know they start. Mm. No.